Hi everyone, I'm Maddie, and today we'll be talking about something I find very serious and has impacted my life completely, and that is how I was diagnosed with cancer. I want to start from the very beginning and how I found out that I was diagnosed, what happened to me and the treatment that I'm still going through right now. And before I begin this video, I just want to say please don't judge me, it happens to a lot of people and it is a really an awful experience. So it all started when I went to my primary school fate last year, which is August 2015. My mum and dad saw this big lump on my leg, so it was just about here. So it was the size of a golf ball, really. I think much of it at the time. I really was like, what the hell, that's weird. Okay, whatever, I don't care. And I was like, I get it. it was just more embarrassing. I was like, what? I was walking around with that. People must have been staring at me. So we went to my local GP. So, and he said, oh, it's just a fatty lump. We'll just cut it out. And yeah. And I'm like, can I get it done before I go to Australia? And he's like, mm, no. I'm like, but I'm going to be in a bikini with a big lump on my leg. And it's just more about, <laughs> I don't want people to see me with that thing, it's disgusting. That's a plastic surgeon I went to. Um, so, and he said, he looked, took one look at it and he was like, no, that's not a funny lump, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm like, then what is it? And he said, well, it's a possibility that it's cancer. And I'm just trying to be strong here and I'm like, what? what? Like, this can't be happening to me. Those things where you think, it doesn't happen to you ever so then that day we had to have an MRI and I biopsy and then a biopsy is they had my leg and they put like where the lump was they put a needle into it which was really painful and they had to extract bits of the tissue after the biopsy MRI they still had no idea what it was so I had to get an operation to remove it obviously so I was referred to another doctor and he removed it because and it had to be that doctor because there was a nerve right where they removed it which meant, meant like if they hit the nerve there was a possibility that I could never walk again and like they'd have to cut off my leg and I was like well, what the hell I was in hospital for three days in recovering and I had this huge um, sp splint that was on my leg. It was like a very long blue thing that kept my um, leg straight and I had to learn how to walk again and I was on crutches for a very long time. Once I got home my GP came to visit me with the results and he told me it was indeed cancer which they still didn't know what type of cancer or anything so I had to go for more MRIs and PET scans, CT scans, and uh, a bone marrow um, thing. So for bone marrow, they had to put me under. They had to put two needles in my back, and I wrote, I remember waking up from that, and I was crying so bad. I was on the side, like laying on my side, and it just hit me then that I had cancer, and. I was in denial for so long, but yeah, why me, why, why me at all, I'm 15, what does that mean, am I gonna die or something, and not many 15 year olds have that moment in their life, really, and I'm just a kid, still in school, I work so hard in school, I try to get A's, oh, it's just, why me? I just had a modelling opportunity, an agency wanted to con um, contacted me, I went in for an interview and that's when I was having that week of MRIs and everything and my mum didn't tell me but then because I was so devastated but they actually called me back to go and see them 
and they just said, no, I, I was got cancer, I can't do it. After all the MRIs and bone marrow and everything, they found out that I have rhabdomyosarcoma, <laughs> which is really long and it's really rare, especially for people my age. It's basically a fatty tissue lump. I don't even know what it is really. I had 43 weeks of chemo and six weeks of radiation. So, which radiation was every day for six weeks, but luckily when it got to it, they said, oh, you only need four weeks now. After that, I had to have another um, operation, which had to put in my port on how I was gonna get chemo. And it's like a little square, square, it's like that little. It's like right here on my boob, and it has like these little vein things. It's connected to my veins in my neck. So that's why I've got a uh, scar there and scar there. So that's where it is. So that's how I get my chemo. I also had to have a needle in my stomach to make sure I didn't have my period for the whole time because otherwise there's a chance that I couldn't have babies. So that was insane because like, uh, I have a girl, that's like, I don't think I'd be able to live if I wouldn't have my own children. So I want to try explain the effects of chemotherapy and how and when I actually have it. So I did a little uh, drawing. Oh wow, it's quite big. Okay, so first, so basically every week, well, I have vincristine, which is V, and it's about 10 minutes, it doesn't take long, but I have to wait ages just to get my blood results done, just so I'm like, oh yeah, she's allowed to have it. And it's like constipation, numbness, fatigue, ulcers. And then every three weeks, I have a big chemo and it depends which one it is. So normally, oh, it can either be A and C or Oh, we're in a tea can. Wow, this is really awkward. Um, so rotational. So A, you can push it in the drip, so it's quite quick, so like two minutes or whatever. And then C, it goes through the drip for an hour into me. And it's nausea, vomiting, fatigue, tiredness, loss and change of appetite, effects, platelets, which like make you not bleed as much like if you didn't have platelets and you cut yourself you continuously bleeding it wouldn't stop and also red and white blood cells which red is basically how if you don't have enough red blood cells you get really really tired and fatigue and um yeah you do need that to keep going and white blood cells is your immunity, so if there was people with a cold near you, you could easily get sick. And then you'd be in hospi hospital. Great. Then there's a rheumatic cam, which is five days on that, on that week. And it's 1.5 hours. So it'd be Monday to Friday, 1.5 hours each day and it's the worst, you feel so awful. It's diarrhea, excessive, uh, fatigue, tiredness, nausea, vomiting, and can lower red and white blood cells, and, but it doesn't do that as much for me. And also, it's like week one, you have VAC, week two, V, week three, V, and then week four, Vin Christine and Iron Tea Can. I do have my good and bad weeks. It's basically like, if I try to explain it, it's like you know how you have a cold, well not a cold, but like you have the flu for a week. It's kind of like that, but worse. And it's just ongoing. So I normally have, uh, when I have the vac, I feel awful. And then the next week is not as, bad but then I actually end up getting a temperature which I'll have to go to the hospital for at least three days and then if I the week after I run a tea can I'm normally really tired too so I basically have two bad weeks and one good week 
I'm currently in my 28th week out of 43 so this holidays in two weeks time I will have done two-thirds of my treatment which is absolutely amazing I can't believe I've done that I've also finished radiation that was in January and oh, I'm so glad that's done so obviously the major side effect that affects it's a huge deal that everyone knows about is loss of hair. I lost my hair. It started falling out like through two to three weeks into my chemo and I shaved my head. Uh, well, I got really sick at one point right at the start. So like my fourth week and I was in hospital for a week just over a week actually. It starts off with your hairline, it goes right back and then I shaved it afterwards because it was, you can't brush it because otherwise it all just falls out. If you want me to do another video about actually hair losing, like losing your hair, I'll do it and you can just mess, comment below if you want me to do that or not. Also, I actually lost a lot of weight throughout because my whole appetite changed like, now but I used to love like something and then now I actually hate it so it changed completely and also when you're having chemo it you don't want to eat because you feel so awful like you vomit it up so I, ha I have lots of medication for that but um, I lost about eight kilos to be begin with so I had to get a nasal gastric tube which I'm glad I finally got rid of, but it's basically a tube they put up your nose and it goes down into the throat, into your stomach and yeah, so it'd be like out on here on my cheek and it was taped and oh, it was just so embarrassing because you'd go to like the shops and people would just like stare at you like I didn't go to school all of term four last year and the last two weeks of term three because when I got diagnosed and everything so I now it's 2016 and I go to school on my good week so I've gone about it's an eight week term I've probably gone four weeks also the hardest part for me was obviously losing my hair but also because I was in that school I barely saw my friends like they'd come and visit me now and then but still they also have a life and they had school work to do as well and if I did see them it was only for like they pop around for like an hour tops I think and oh, it's like stay with me please oh, I guess I'll talk about the stages I went through at first like emotionally um, at first I was in denial, I didn't even want anyone to say the word, the C word, cancer, like I hated it and denial, until I started chemo I thought this couldn't be happening, I was living in a nightmare, it was actually insane, but yeah, and then I got really angry, like, or actually more angry, so the universe like saying why me I worked hard my entire life in school I had dreams I wanted to do many things and then I got sick I just couldn't deal and the hardest part for me was that at the beginning I thought it was my fault because I used to think my reason was that I wonder what it's like to have anxiety and then I got anxiety and then I wonder what it's like to have cancer because I knew someone who got it who was around my age and I was like that must be so hard I wonder what it's like and I used to think that that was my brain saying, okay, let's show you what it's like. It was my fault. And my mum would be saying, no, it's not your fault. It just happened and we'll get through it. But 
I'll never be able to forget that. I just thought it was my brain telling me it was just doing that. And yeah, so the thing was tell yourself that you have cancer, but you're going to get through this, you're going to fight it, and you're going to beat its ass. <laughs> That's the thing. If your brain was so powerful, you could get through this, you could actually fight it, and you could live and grow and have a life. I'm just so appreciative of life and good health. Like, on my good days, I do as much as I can. I guess this is it so um like comment and subscribe comment below please questions you want to ask me because i want to do a q a on going through cancer comment below some questions you want to ask me and what type of videos of involving cancer like what i've been through technically so um let me know in the comments below and yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.